Thank you very much for this opportunity to be here to present this uh, project we've been working on collaboratively, collaboratively for uh, over a year now. Um, it's natural language processing models for the masses. And we're going to explain how we took the Quantita package for R and wrapped it in a software as a service model um, using Shiny. I'm Ken Benoit. I'm a professor at the London School of Economics and founder of the Quantita Corporation and also maintainer and creator of the Quantita package. Um, and this is Damien, who's vice president of the board of Absalon, and he's going to be doing the second part of the presentation where he explains some of the technology behind this, uh, this application that we've created. Everyone can hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. So the agenda is we're going to talk a little bit about the Quantita package and what that is, if you haven't heard of it. And we're going to talk about how the graphical user interface works, uh, which is a complete non-programmer graphical user interface around the package and its functions. And then we're going to talk about how this magical thing was built. At least Damien's going to talk about that. So let me explain to you a little bit about the Quantita package. First of all, what is where did this name come from? Well, it stands for the quant Quantitative Analysis of Textual Data which is basically the focus of my academic research and a lot of my uh, activities in general. It's a mixture of natural language processing tools for R and functions for doing the quantitative analysis of the textual data that comes from processing the natural language. Um, natural language processing part of the package consists of methods for organizing corpus or corpora, which is a collection of text. It consists of methods for tokenizing those texts, for doing a lot of selection and manipulation of the tokens objects and for um, transforming those in, in various ways that are useful. It, it also has a set of extremely fast and extremely flexible tools for converting the tokens into matrix objects because for machine learning and quantitative and textual statistics, we need um, to convert these objects into matrix representations. This includes both a document feature representation or what you might have heard it called a document term matrix um, and also feature co-occurrence matrices. And finally, um, Quantita implements as part of the analysis part a variety of textual statistics such as readability, lexical diversity, um, cosine similarity, a whole bunch of distance and similarity measures and also methods for implementing machine learning or scaling for measurement applications and it also works very nicely with other packages in the R ecosystem for handing off these objects. If you wish to use something like fitting a topic model, then we have conversion functions that allow you to work with every sort of topic model package or fitting word embedding models or things that aren't part of Quantita. This, for those of you who are not familiar with the natural processing, natural language processing typical uh, tool kit or uh, framework or I guess stages of analysis, um, we pre prepared this little representation for you just to give you an idea of this process. So on the left hand side here, you see a set of actual texts. These are snippets of text that were taken from State of the Union addresses from US presidents. These are just small representations, but this is what your raw input data would look like. This is unstructured raw language data. Our qualitative brains are great at understanding this, but the computer doesn't know how to make sense of it. To make sense of that, we have to split these up into constituent elements, which we would call something like tokens. Tokens are probably individual words, but they can also be things that are based on words such as stems, tokens, or bigrams, or trigrams of tokens, some sort of stream of continuous words. Then we have to do some selections on those. You might get rid of stop words, or we might select only certain tokens that are parts of speech specific. And then we form them into a matrix. Quantita has the fastest uh, token to matrix conversion routine uh, that you'll find anywhere in R. And if you, if you want to challenge me on that, I will. Um, we spent a lot of time rewriting that. Um, but it creates a matrix object that looks like the one that you see in the middle. Um, and these are counts of the number of times these tokens occur in each document. And then from that matrix representation, we now have something that we can apply to. Yeah, we can apply all of our standard statistical and machine learning tools to this object in order to basically create representations, quantitative representations and models. So we can um, get term frequencies, we can compute keenest statistics or readability statistics, lexical diversity, we can compute distance measures, similarity measures for clustering, we can apply a variety of machine learning models, scaling models, topic models, embedding models, um, 
basically anything that you can think of that you can do with the matrix. And then, of course, we can represent these graphically, and there are functions built into Quantita graphically. So you are probably not the target audience for a graphical user interface because that's designed for people who can't program in R, but you can program in R. And if you check out the package, you'll see that we have spent a lot of time on design. The API is very consistent. You'll see a set of functions that represent the stages of this NLP process, such as corpus functions, tokens functions, document feature and F feature code occurrence matrix functions, and then a variety of functions for doing textual statistics, text models, and text plots. The naming is extremely consistent. Why? Because we're OCD and because we like design. So if you are thinking of a function to manipulate tokens, it'll be named tokens underscore something. So if you want to use, for example, uh, functions to figure out, this is from the Hang and Lee Naive Bay sentiment analysis article. They have 2,000 movie, re movie reviews that have been annotated as positive or negative 1,000 each. If you take that corpus and you load it, and you can then tokenize that corpus, you can take out the punctuation and the numbers using the tokens function, then you can pipe that, because this works completely well with pipes, to remove stop words, English language stop words, then we can create a document feature matrix where we have grouped 1,000 documents that have metadata that is embedded in the document in the tokens object according to sentiment, we end up with a two by many thousands of tokens matrix where the two rows are positive and negative. Then we can take a function called keyness, text at keyness, we can compute a chi-squared measure that tells you the discriminating capability or the discrimination of each word to that class of positive or negative. And then we can send that directly to a function to plot the keyness. But with that small bit of code, you can produce a plot that looks like this, that tells you the most negative and positive words from a movie review. Um, some of the positive words are associated with movies that people liked. Um, some of the negative words are just generic negative words. So you can see that, for example, the word bad, worst, boring, stupid, these are strongly negative words, and these come from this textual statistics. So this is really interesting. If you're an R programmer, you know, you're going to want to leave this session and go study Quantita immediately to start using it right away. But what if you can't do this? Well, for people who can't do that, we've developed a graphical user interface. Why? Because we want to reach audiences that are not R programmers. And you know that we are a special elite group who can program in R, but not everyone is like this. There are academic users who are students, who are researchers, who are early career researchers, people who want to apply this in research, but maybe know a different programming language or not any programming language. There are people in the industry who want to apply these models who would be um, in marketing, in legal, in journalistic, even medical fields. And then there are people in policy, people who work in government, people who work in various fields where this is important for the analysis of the effective delivery of policy and they need natural language processing tools, but they don't want to do a deep dive into R. So we developed that something that looks like this. And you can see that this is a menu-based and tab-based graphical user interface, single page application with different tabs for different functions that represent the stages of that natural language processing pipeline. And what we see here is the representation of text that have been split into tokens. And these tokens are represented, uh, the first 20 tokens are these little pill-shaped things that are associated with each document. So, we prepared a few animations of this. We're not going to try a live demo because we don't have that much time and you never do a live demo. <laughs> this is an uh, example of how to load a corpus. This is, there are some built-in corpora that are available when you start this application. You can load this in and this is the movie review corpus that's been loaded. Um, and you can see how this works with point click. Here is an example of doing the tokenization where we remove punctuation, we remove numbers, which is exactly what we did before. Then you hit the create button, and then this creates the tokens. You can see that this is the representation in the inspect pane. We can then do some selection where we take the modify pane of this tab, and we choose remove, and we choose to remove the English language stop words. In this case, um, we hit apply, and then that creates a new tokens object with the stop words removed. Then we are able to 
perform the conversion to a document feature matrix, and you notice there that the groups was selected in order to group the documents by a document level metadata variable or a document variable, in this case sentiment, and that creates a matrix which will be um, two rows in dimensions. And then we're able to go to the statistics view and choose the create tab in order to create a document feature Sorry, in order to create a textual statistic, we use the chi-squared measure of association here that tells us the association of each term with the class of positive or negative, with the chi-squared indicating the strength of that association. And then we can take that object in the plots menu, and we are able to complete this workflow by choosing that statistics object, just like we did in the R pipeline, and create the plot for it, which results in this graphic, which is exactly what I showed you using code that can be, then be downloaded and inserted into your report. And you didn't have to use a single line of R code to do it. How, how did we create this amazing application? I'm going to turn it over to Damien now to explain. All right, thank you, Ken. Uh, while we are in the of those. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to show you one more uh, interesting slide before I dive into this. Um, we also added uh, the ability to uh, have different languages in the application. And as uh, many of you uh, may decide to actually share your knowledge with others, or you may decide to make a digital transformation at your own company, um, I would like to give you some key insights how you can do it by yourself, how you can build a large scale shiny application, and uh, what is important to take a look at. So first and foremost, the important part is uh, to design the product in a good way. So in order to do that, you need to make sure that you have the feedback from your end users as early and as often as possible. And I suggest you to take a look at the agile methodology to design and uh, implement the solution, because this gives you iterations. You can have two weeks of work after which you create the product increments, and then you can share the product increments to your end users get the feedback, and based on that feedback, you can basically start planning the next two weeks of work. And you will see that by evolution, you are going to get to a product that actually has the usability that was designed not by you, but, but by your end users. Uh, of course, you won't be able to do that without ability to quickly deploy. If you do it uh, manually, it is going to take a long time. Uh, there are a few ways of uh, automating the deployment. One that we use is uh, creating Ansible scripts. So Ansible is a tool that's going to do the whole provisioning and deployment for you. But there is also another option. There is RStudio Connect, which is a successor of uh, Shine Server Pro. And it actually has uh, this uh, amazing ability of deploying your whole application just by clicking in RStudio IDE at one button. So basically, you click the button, all the prerequisites, all the libraries are installed instantly on the server, and you can share your application with others. So, in order to build a complex and good-looking application, I strongly recommend to you to leverage the, the open source. Uh, our R community is amazing. Everyone wants to share, and everyone uh, creates uh, new packages for open source. We, as a company, also want to uh, give back to the community, and that's why we share uh, the common parts of our work that make our uh, process of development faster, and we put them as open source packages. I would like to introduce you to uh, three of them. Uh, hopefully, it will help you when you build your own applications, because it helps us tremendously in our, all of our projects. So the first one is Shiny Semantic. And it is a simple package that basically wraps the Semantic UI. And it gives you access to all the good-looking components. But it's not only that. You actually get access to all the components that are interactive. So you have already the inputs and outputs in Shiny already hooked up in your application just by writing a few lines of our code. This is Shiny internationalization. What you saw in the demo was done in a simple package. Uh, all you have to do is actually to implement a CSV uh, in which you actually fill in the translations, and the package is going to do everything for you. This is Shiny Router, and I find it very useful in my work, especially if you have very complex uh, applications. You want to be able to point the user to one of the pages of your application. And what's more, sometimes you want to provide some additional parameters to the model that you are showing to the user, especially if you integrate with internal tools. 
So with Shiny Router, you get all of this just by uh, using a simple, uh, a simple function called get query parameters. And you can orchestrate your whole application and have different pages. So I'm actually very often asked about scale. Um, just recently, I spoke with uh, Job Chang, the CTO of our studio, about how we can actually scale our Shiny applications. I know that this is a difficult topic. But at the same time, it is possible, it is easy, as long as you make sure that the Shiny layer is quite thin. You take advantage of the database and you use EDLs to make sure that the longer computations are done outside of your application. You can actually build a very fast, very good looking application with uh, Shiny. So just to give you an overview, because I'm often asked about this, uh, how you can make the architecture of your Shiny application to scale to multiple users, there are a few options that I chose. The first one is Shiny Atlet.io, which basically allows you to publish your application to the environment that is ready for you, and it just works. The second one is RStudio Connect. So as I said, this is a successor of Shiny Server Pro, and not only does it allow you to deploy the application, but actually you can also deploy Planner API endpoints, which is also very useful. You can deploy our markdown documents, and there is like plenty of other functionality. So I strongly encourage you to take a look at this. Uh, because uh, it, it was proven very useful in our work as well. Uh, you can implement your own solution using Shiny Proxy. So Shiny Proxy, in essence, is going to create a single new container for every session for every user that comes to your application. Uh, it has its drawbacks, but sometimes it is very useful. Uh, of course, you can implement your own solution, and uh, we also have done it before. Um, I recommend using Docker if you want to build everything by yourself because it gives you a very good encapsulation of the environment. And as you all know, the environments, the packages uh, are also a big pain. So uh, I, I truly recommend you using Docker. Um, we don't have too much time to dive uh, into the details, but I'm going to be at the booth in the, during the coffee break. Uh, Ken is also going to be around uh, to uh, help you and answer some of the questions. And I'm very open and happy to share all the knowledge that I have when it comes to scaling and building the apps. Also, just wanted to let you know that we are hiring. So if you want to dive into building the Shiny applications with us or explore the world of data science and machine learning, that I strongly recommend to you to so take a look at our website, absolutely.com slash careers, or just talk to me directly. Uh, here are some resources that can be useful for you, especially the first ones, uh, the Quantida project, uh, amazing work of Ken. Uh, there is plenty of information that you can uh, see a uh, very comprehensive user guide that is going to show you all the functionalities that you can see, uh, and some of the links uh, to uh, learn more about uh, our company. So thank you very much. Uh, I think we don't have time for the questions, so we're going to leave them uh, for the coffee break. So we have, actually, we have time. So okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, for the <laughs>